<laughs> I thought maybe she, she, she was going to hold her a little. Hey. Oh, you're so good. Probably want a bottle, huh? <laughs> the honest thing about your celebrity was that you were a celebrity who couldn't be seen. You were in hiding all the time. You could not have appeared at all. You know, once you appeared, you were the game right. was over. driving with Bill in Sacramento and the woman says, do you look like Patty Earth? We were walking and she was in the car and she pulled up and asked for some directions. And she just looked and looked and then said, you know, you look so much like Patty Hearst. <laughs> Eek. Did you say anything at all? Were you no. able to? I didn't say anything. And Bill Hearst just said, yeah, you know, you people say that all the time. I thought we could have won the case until final arguments. Oh, I mean, that's virtually no closing argument. I mean, I think that's where it was finally lost, was right then. Ultimately, they've got, to, got to prove, the they've got to prove right. reasonable doubt. You know, reasonable doubt. Is it reasonable to assume that someone who has been locked in a closet for 57 days after being kidnapped, brutalized, raped, abused, mm -hmm. then they say, you're going to rob a bank now? I mean, is that reasonable to assume that that person had the free will to go out and willingly... I mean, you're talking about reasonable no. doubt. If you could have erased it, the kidnapping, the birth of Tanya, becoming the most famous fugitive in the world or in the United States, the guerrilla skills you learn, the radicalization, feminization, living life on the edge, jail, the trial, prison, would you like to have erased it all? I mean, there are some days when I think, ugh. There's always some days when you wish things had never happened, like you've never been born, that sort of thing. Yeah. No, but I'm not the kind of person anyway that can just sit around and say, oh, gee, I wish that had never happened. I don't, I don't ever do that. There's no point. That is a total and complete waste of time. What were the circumstances surrounding the times you were hit? Oh, you know, I made some sassy remark or didn't move fast enough or, you know, was disrespectful to my leader. Was it a back slap or was it a fist punch it in the eye? It was a eye? punch. Right in the eye? Yeah. Did he ever hit you any breaks else in or the face? Or the stomach or, you know. I mean, you're so fragile. If I punched you in the eye, I, I would be afraid I'd crack your whole face. How no, hard I got you? hit in the face with a gun. I'm not very fragile at all. <laughs> so it makes me think that maybe things would be easier if I were terribly frail and fragile somehow. I just want to straighten out a few facts. You were a willing participant in the bank robbery at that time. Well, but you can't separate them like that. You can't say, we're not talking about your, uh, the threats that you were under. They said if I didn't do it, they'd kill me. In a sense, I became as much of a believer as I was capable of becoming. But you're talking about someone, too, who really has no free will anymore. Mm -hmm. That's when we're getting into that thing about uh, traumatic neurosis with dissociative features. Is, is who the told you about this? the name for what happened to me. What everyone calls brainwashing, that is the actual name for it. Wasn't like you were in a fog. Oh, no, it wasn't like I was in a fog and, you know, didn't know what was happening. Right. You know, like, where am I? Right. <laughs> I mean, at the same time, I mentally and emotionally I was not fully in control of myself. Right. You made a conscious choice to stay alive in the SLA, and whatever it took to stay alive, you were going to do it. Even if it meant killing other people, blowing up police cars, shooting up Mel's uh, sporting goods shop. It didn't. It didn't. It, it never came, very, came up. Well, it came close, though. It didn't. When did it come close? At Mel's, it came close. It didn't come close at Mel's. You shot right above everybody and below everybody. That's, it came right. close, but that's close, Daddy. There was never a thought of kill or be killed. Never. Not ever. I don't know that I would ever choose to kill. Did it take guts to join the SLA? Would it have taken more guts not to have joined, to have resisted and eventually I tried to escape? I crazy to not joined because I knew they would have just killed me. That doesn't take guts. <laughs> Will you do this or would you rather be dead? Well, 
gee, I'd rather be with you. I mean, I think I suppose it would take much more guts to say, never, I'd rather die. I'm sorry, I'm a coward, you know? I didn't want to die. <laughs> I like deer, and um, but we eat everything we shoot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and um, people who've never gone hunting have a tendency to um, look down on hunters and act like they're out killing Bambi's father. Isn't you it have terrible to try to, to do. I mean, it's poor deer. It's a beautiful animal. I mean, why not just buy steak? You what have else? to have what gone hunting to know the excitement of, of seeing someone get their first deer. It's a thrill for them. It is. It's. What else would you like? Would you feel satisfied shooting? Oh, a boar? Maybe you. And a, no. <laughs> <laughs> that um, yeah, stays in. <laughs> <laughs>